Myth is pervasive in history, and it seems like the American Civil War attracts myth and legend more than other conflicts, and it drives some of us just crazy. Despite all good evidence that says that most Civil War surgeries north and south were performed under anesthesia, we still have the myths about soldiers screaming through every amputation and biting bullets and whatnot. Despite all evidence that we have with records and pictures and everything like that, this idea that Civil War regiments and brigades are populated with 12 and 13 and 14 and even 15-year-old boys is just crazy. Most Civil War soldiers were 18, 19, 20, even 21 and 22 and above from there. Sure, people tried to watch the Battle of Bull Run, but they weren't on the battlefield. They weren't even right next to the battlefield. They were four miles away with their picnic baskets, maybe hearing some of the battle, seeing a little smoke rise from the battlefield. And despite being able to read their writings, understand Civil War people, we still can't help but think that somehow we're smarter than people of the Civil War. If only we were around, we would have told them a better way to fight, a better way to conduct their government. And it's just wrong. And you would be hard-pressed to find a Civil War topic that is more hotly debated than why the Civil War started in the first place. I think the first key is to separate why the South seceded from why people fought. And when you can do that, I think you can understand it a little bit better. I don't know why people debate about why the South seceded. The South told us why they seceded. They told us in the Articles of Secession. They told us in the documents that came with secession conventions and the commissioners that went to other states. They seceded because of slavery. Now, the idea that Southerners all fought for slavery is just crazy. Crazy. South and North had reasons for fighting, and there were hundreds of different reasons. They were fighting for a sense of adventure, fighting to keep their homes, fighting for a job, fighting in order to protect their country, to save the Union, to save the South, fighting for states' rights. You pick. I think that myth really serves to help us paint people of the 19th century with a broad brush. And I think nobody suffers from that more than George McClellan. McClellan did a lot of things very well. You try to manage an army. You try to manage the largest army in the world and be a great communicator, a great tactician, a great administrator, a great strategist, and do all that at once and do it all really well. And Ambrose Burnside, poor Burnside, okay? The bridge is known notoriously, like he never captured the thing. He totally captured Burnside's bridge. It should bear his name. Sure, it took a while to get it. And you know what? He had independent commands sometimes. He did really well when he had his independent commands. Look at him at Knoxville, where he defeats James Longstreet. And we do the same thing for the Confederates. No, John Bell Hood wasn't on laudanum or some other opiate throughout the Civil War. He probably hardly ever was from the evidence we had. Stonewall Jackson didn't always win. He lost some of the time as well. Braxton Bragg, he's probably not always talking to himself. And Jefferson Davis was not captured in petticoats at the end of the Civil War. I understand the propagation of myths because they make for good stories, but the stories of the Civil War are quite good enough without any of that going on. Abraham Lincoln wrote the Gettysburg Address partly in Washington. He probably finished it in Gettysburg. He didn't finish it on the back of an envelope. We know what he wrote it on. We have the things he wrote it on. Stop propagating that myth if you are indeed. And just because some people at the Battle of Cold Harbor pinned their names onto the back of their coats does not mean that everybody did, nor does it mean that everybody at Cold Harbor was killed and that all those people who were killed were killed in one final charge, the one U.S. Grant regretted. No, the Battle of Gettysburg did not start over shoes. There's no shoe factory anywhere around here. And when you go to historic sites today, not just Civil War sites, the ghost stories that are being told are just ridiculous. It's not that there's no such thing as ghosts. It's that the stories that they tell on ghost tours and in ghost books are absolutely made up to make money. So at least study your history with your eyes wide open. I have no problem with people reading historical fiction, watching movies about the Civil War or history that might not be entirely correct. Just know that there's a lot of myth associated with history and you should be able to separate fact from fiction.